Hi, my name is Jake, and I am a bookish drummer. So in this video, I'm going to be ranking Stephen King's short story and novella collections. As far as preparing for one of these ranking videos and actually coming up with the list and putting everything in order, this was probably the easiest list to make because I really enjoy his collections and then, you know, there's a handful that I really don't enjoy. So putting them in order just came very naturally to me. I basically have different tiers for all of these collections. There's a few that I really don't like, a few that are kind of average, and then there's a few that are really good, and then there's like the two or three that are just like all time favorites. So basically I'm just gonna go in order, starting from my least favorite, going all the way up to my favorite. And as I talk about them, I'm gonna try to mention at least one or two of my standouts and then probably mention a few, if any, that I don't like. And that won't be very hard for these bottom ones, trust me. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So by far my least favorite of his collections. When I thought of making this video, just I instantly knew what was going at the bottom. And it's this piece of garbage. Nightmares and Dreamscapes. For me, a short story collection should be short. <laughs> this, there's only like 20 some stories in here, but it's almost 700 pages. Like these stories are just way too long. They're tedious. And quite frankly, there's only one standout story in here that I like, and it's called Suffer the Little Children. Other than that, like, the stories are either just okay at best or just downright not good or bad. Like I said, easily the best and only really standout story for me is Suffer the Little Children. Dolan's Cadillac is fine, but it's way too long. It's like 50 pages, and it's not that great. And then you've got stories like Chattery Teeth and Sneakers that are just, they're just so dumb. You know what, it, it's its not even worth going over this crap. Let's, let's just move on. Number nine on the list, my second least favorite short story collection, is one of his newer ones, The Bizarre of Bad Dreams. I think one of the main reasons why this was such a disappointment for me was because when it first came out, I was newly into reading Stephen King. And when it came out, I was super hyped for it. And when I read it, it was just a letdown. Now, unlike Nightmares and Dreamscapes. This does have a few standout stories that I do actually like. Premium Harmony is one. Batman and Robin have an altercation. The Dune. Bad Little Kid. If I remember correctly, Morality and Afterlife were pretty good. Other than that, the stories, maybe they weren't necessarily bad. I just felt very underwhelmed by them. Maybe I'd like it more upon a reread just because it's been a very long time since I've read them, and maybe now that I've grown more as a person and as a King fan in general, maybe going back and reading them, I'd have a better experience. But for now, just how I remember this book, I did not enjoy it very much. So those were just the two bad books that I remember not liking very much at all. Now we're getting into territory where it's like, okay, these are starting to get good now. My number eight pick for this list is Everything's Eventual. And while this collection is good, I'd probably give it three, three and a half stars. It's still a mixed bag. You've got really good stories, but then you've got kind of a few mediocre stories to go along with them. And actually, probably most of the standout stories in here are longer, almost novella length, really. You've got The Little Sisters of Luria, which is kind of a Dark Tower-related story. You've got the title story, Everything's Eventual. 
which is good. You've got 1408, which is great, and Riding the Bullet, which is also very good. But there's also some standout um, short stories in here too, like Lucky Quarter, the very last one, is very good. Autopsy Room 4 might be my favorite in this collection. You also have a very good story called That Feeling You Can Only Say What It Is in French. That one I remember really liking. But I'll be honest, I'm looking at these stories and probably the ones that I didn't mention are the ones that I don't remember very well, which, which means that they're forgettable. So for me, those are probably the stories that weren't as good, like All the Love, or All That You Love Will Be Carried Away, The Death of Jack Hamilton, The Death Room, LT's Theory of Pets, The Road Virus Heads North, Lunch at the Gotham Cafe. I don't really remember those. But yeah, basically the main reason why this is lower on the list is just because it's a mixed bag. You get some really good ones, and then some kind of forgettable ones. And number seven on the list is my lowest ranked novella collection, Four Past Midnight. Like I've said before in previous videos, I'm a huge fan of King novellas, but for me, this is his weakest one. And that's not to say that these stories are bad, just compared to the brilliance that is his other novella collections. It just, it just doesn't live up to them. I would say the two best novellas in here are the two first ones. You've got The Langoliers, which is really good, and you've got Secret Window, Secret Garden, also great. But then the other two, The Library Policeman, that wasn't very good. It was fine, but compared to the other two, yeah. And then you got The Sun Dog, and honestly, I don't remember too much about that one. So that one's pretty forgettable, which normally Stephen King novellas are not forgettable. <laughs> so yeah, that's easily my least favorite novella collection. And he has three more, and you will definitely see those later on in the list. And number six on the list, it pains me to have this book so low just because it was one of the very first King books I read very early on in my King reading career, and I was just surprised making this list. I was like, wow, this is kind of lower than I thought it would be, but it's Skeleton Crew. This collection has very classic King short stories and one classic novella by him, but it also kind of has some stuff that I'm a little indifferent about. And there's a lot of standout stories in here. You've got The Mist, obviously. You have The Monkey, Mrs. Todd's Shortcut, The Jaunt, which might even be my favorite. Um, you've got The Raft, Word Processor of the Gods, um, Survivor Type, another favorite. But then you've got a few on here that I know it's been a long time since I've read it, but you would figure, you know, if it's one of my favorites, I would remember most of these. But Kane Rose Up, nothing really comes to mind. The Wedding Gig. And then you also have, like, a, a bunch of, like, random, like, really short, either, like, really short stories or just basically poems. Like, Paranoid, A Chant, and For Owen. Like, I'm not a huge fan of that kind of stuff. But yeah, the more I looked into it, the more that I realized it's kind of a mixed bag, almost like everything's eventual, because you've got really standout stories in here that are just some of my all-time favorites by him. But then you've got a few that I don't even remember what they're about. It's probably the biggest surprise for me and probably for anyone watching, I would assume. A lot of people would put this a lot higher, I believe but now we'll see what's in my top five. My number five pick for this list is Just After Sunset. This was the main book I was debating which should go higher, Just After Sunset or Skeleton Crew. 
And when I looked at this, the stories that are in here, almost all of them are great. I'm not really sure if there's a bad one in here at all. And then, of course, there's tons of standout ones. The ones that stand out to me are The Gingerbread Girl, Harvey's Dream, Stationary Bike, Graduation Afternoon, In, The Cat from Hell, and A Very Tight Place. All of those are just extremely good. And for anyone who has read a bunch of King books but they haven't read this one, I think you're missing out. And my number four spot on this list and my third favorite novella collection is Full Dark No Stars. I mean, there's four novellas in here. They're all great. None of them are bad. It's just essentially a perfect collection. And the title of the collection is very apt because all of these stories are very dark in different ways. And as far as choosing a favorite in here, they're all so different and they're all so good in various ways that I don't even think I can really choose a favorite. Just as a whole, it's just terrific. I will say probably the story in here that's um, the most underrated would be Fair Extension. It's the shortest and it's the only one in here that doesn't have a movie adaptation. So it doesn't really get talked a lot about, but it's still really good and worth reading. It almost feels like it could be like a collection of Richard Bachman novellas because in a way it's very nihilistic, just like a lot of Bachman books. And like I said, they're all very dark stories. And from this point on in the list, we're talking about not only my favorite collections from him, but just some of my favorite books in general. In fact, the top three books I would all safely put in my top 10 King books ever. That's how much I like these. And my third favorite collection from him is his very first published short story collection, Night Shift. It's by far my favorite short story collection from King. Not necessarily because all of the stories are like my all-time favorite stories, because a lot of these other collections, while I don't like them as much, a lot of those have my favorite stories in them. It's just that this is the most consistent. There's not a bad story in here, which is impressive because I think there's about 19 or 20 short stories and they're all great. If I had to choose some standout ones, uh, Graveyard Shift, I Am the Doorway, The Boogeyman, Gray Matter, Sometimes They Come Back, Quitters Inc. is probably my favorite, I Know What You Need, Children of the Corn, The Last Rung on the Ladder, like those are all great. I don't know if I could necessarily choose a least favorite, but I'll, I'll comb through this and I'll see, um, you know what, probably Night Surf, which is kind of the basis for The Stand, and you know, I'm not a huge fan of The Stand, so I guess that would be the safe answer for me. Like I said, this is easily my favorite short story collection, and I would assume that this is a lot of people's favorite also. It's also a good place to start with King if you're, if you don't want to become invested in one of his novels, especially if they're super long. You can just try out a story or two and see, you know, if you like it. But yeah, this is number three on the list. And my top two favorite collections from King. They're both novella collections. One of them was written in the 80s and one of them came out last year. And I went back and forth trying to decide which one I liked better. Did I want to go with what I read recently and fell in love with or do I want to go with one that was one of my very first King books that I've just absolutely love. And it was tough. So for number two I went with If It Bleeds. 
it's one of those rare books that I get excited about and I was heavily anticipating this book because I'm such a huge fan of King's novellas and when I heard that he was coming out with a novella collection I could not have been more hyped and it's one of those rare moments where my very high expectations were met and were surpassed which that almost never happens I I just love this collection and, and please don't make me choose a favorite in here they're they're all so good and like I've said they're all so good and they're different and di I can't even talk anymore <laughs> even the story that I was the most worried about in this book which is the title story it follows a character that's in the Mr. Mercedes trilogy and I'll be honest she wasn't necessarily one of my favorite characters she is turning into a king fan favorite character but for me she was never one of my favorites so I was a little worried when I found out that she was going to be getting her own novella and then when I got my copy I realized how long it was and I was like oh man but it it was great and I really enjoy her character more now because of this novella which is amazing and this book just in general when it came out it really helped me during a very difficult time in my life. My dad, who I loved very much, passed away about a month before this book came out. And we were both huge Stephen King fans. We both have read, you know, almost all of his books. So when he passed away, I was obviously very sad. And then when this book came out, it was just, it was very bittersweet and... I, I use this book to basically just kind of cope with reality. And it really pains me not to put it in the number one spot yet because I've only read it once and it's just been such a recent read. It, I think it, it came out not even a year ago. So I think it, I think it just needs more time and I'm probably going to have to reread it again. But, you know, at this point, my number one and two spot, it's just splitting hairs. And obviously the book that I chose for my number one spot, my number one favorite novella collection and collection from King ever is Different Seasons. It's definitely the safe pick. And for a long time, I've put this book as my second favorite King book ever, just behind The Dead Zone. And I've read this book twice and just, <laughs> there's not much to say, it's, it's just perfect. It is funny though, because the first three novellas in this collection all got made into movies. But then the very last novella, which has not been adapted, is The Breathing Method. And that's probably my favorite in here. And it might be my favorite novella he's ever written. It's one of my favorite King experiences I can remember. Because when I was reading this for the first time, I obviously knew the first three stories because I had seen those movies before. But for The Breathing Method, I had no idea what was going to happen. And the ending to it, like, legitimately shocked me and... I might have actually like been reading it with my jaw open like it's one of those endings that just stays crystal clear in my mind and it's just it's burned into my memory there's no way I'm gonna ever forget that so when I tell people that I love Stephen King novellas I'm not kidding because he has 10 collections and three of his novella collections are in my top four and a lot of the standout stories that are in his sh short story collections they're novellas <laughs> anyway what did you guys think of this video what are some of your favorite and least favorite of his collections and just in general what are some of your favorite stories that he's written let me know down in the comments below
And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.